Good morning beautiful people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. We're in the kitchen. Yay! I'm not doing any cooking. <laughs> Going to start doing some more seed sowing, which we'll come on to in a second. Uh, I just thought I'd have a quick little catch up on a couple of things with you from a seated position because frankly my knees are killing me at the moment. Oh my goodness. Um, look, it's that time of year. It's from sort of the beginning of April right through to the beginning of June. It's go, 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 go in the garden. And, you know, no matter how um, good my beds are, say, under the cardboard, it's still a lot of physical work on me, poor old knees. You know what? It's just the way it is. It's the same every year. I know what's coming. <laughs> it's probably why I delayed for so long getting my spud trenches done. I know what's coming. It's graft. It's plain and simple, hard graft. You know, and it's silly, even little things like doing the seeds, standing up to do the seeds. You know, in a fantasy life, I would have a lovely big potting shed and a nice low potting bench so I could sit and do my seeds, never mind. So, um, yeah, it's just how it is. And you know, it's similar when we get into generally the end of September, October, through to about the middle of November. That's the other um, hard push part of the year. So, suck it up, buttercup, <laughs> just get on and do it. Quick word on the knees, it's reminding me, some of you have been asking if I've had any news yet. Hang on, I'm just going to get the water. If I've had any news yet about um, my return to work. Not yet. So um, I've had all sorts of emails coming backwards and forwards. I've got a load of online learning and stuff to do. Um, I need to phone and speak to someone for my sort of area manager. I think the bottom line is, um, so apparently she was telling me, I think it's something like 36,000 nurses have offered to go back to work. Um, so far they've got 5,000 back into the workforce. Obviously it takes time, they've got to go through all the checks, da, 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 what have you. And I had a conversation, I had like a video interview and the lady was saying how so many of the nurses she's spoken to have said, yes, I really want to come back and help. However, after a lifetime of nursing, I've got arthritis in my knees, I've got arthritis in my back, I've got arthritis in my shoulders. So it looks like a lot of people who were offering to go back with the best will in the world, we're not fit for it. So, for example, I've said I wouldn't be able to manage more than six hours at a time. I just wouldn't be able to do it on my knees. So I think what's happening is they are obviously hiring the youngest and the fittest. Not necessarily the youngest, but definitely the fittest. And they're probably looking at nurses who've only just left the profession, you know, in the last sort of one, two, three months or so because they'll be most up to date, um, you know, their skills will be very much still in here and in here. So yeah, no news yet. If that changes, I will let you know. Uh, right, now, <laughs> in other news, guess what I'm gonna talk about? The Daily Grump, the compost. <laughs> very quickly. Um, so loads of you have given me really good advice and talked about this thing called the distance selling regulations or rules. So I looked that up and it's like, oh yes, I do have rights. So I've emailed back to that company to say, look, I'm sorry, you're too late. Cancel my order. I want to re I would like a refund. I worded it very nicely. So I had an email back from them. Yay! Opened it. It's another generic email. It's exactly the same email as I've had about five or six times already. We're not answering emails, we're not doing refunds, we're not answering the phone. And so, <clears throat> uh, the bottom line is this. For now, I'm just gonna forget it. I just, I just have to forget it, because it's, it, you know, it's been bugging me, that's a waste of my energy. Um, and, you know, maybe wait a couple of months and try and get it sorted out then. 
like I said, I think in the last video, I honestly, I, you know, I don't want to see any companies go under during this time. Of course I don't. I'm exactly the same. I'm self-employed. I don't want to go under. But the bottom line is, if you can't fulfil your orders, you have to close your order books. Which brings me on to my next point. The lovely local garden centre that delivered my compost last week in three hours. I rang them on Monday morning. What day is it now? I think it's about Thursday. I rang them Monday morning to say, oh, you know, you saved me last week. I'd like to do another order, please. I see you've got some peat free on your website. Today. And she said, sorry, we've had to close our order books. We're having so many orders. So, you know, they've done the right thing. They've closed their order books to make sure that they can fulfill the orders they already have, which is great. Uh, she did tell me that that morning <laughs> they're actually really low on compost because apparently someone had bought 50, 50 bags of compost. Apparently it was a no digger. <laughs> it's like, use your soil and just have one bag of compost to start your seedlings in. Never mind. The great news is, oh my goodness, I could have cried. Um... Within the last couple of days, I'm really losing track of time. I know it's a weekday today, but anyway, within the last couple of days on one of my garden visits, one of my neighbours, one, two over, uh, said, Vivi, I hear you've been having a real nightmare trying to get your compost. I said, yes. She went, we've got a bag for you. <laughs> So they had been to, oh, just to say very quickly about with the local nursery that I rang, after they said their order box, books were closed, I rang about five others, two of which you might consider local, the other three are a bit further out, and they're all saying the same thing. They've closed their order books, they're just trying to make sure they can fulfil the orders they already have. That's responsible, I respect that, <laughs> but I need compost. Anyway, so this neighbour of mine, had um they'd previously ordered some compost as a click and collect thing so while they were there they grabbed an extra bag for me oh i could cry honestly uh i think she was a bit, <laughs> bit gobsmacked by my reaction and if it weren't for social distancing i would have jumped on her i'd have probably had her on the ground in a in a big squashy cuddle anyway that's great but <laughs> all part of the daily grump um she was apologizing profusely oh my goodness she needn't have done the shop have put their prices up i just think it's really naughty i mean it's tantamount to profiteering isn't it so she said i'm really sorry it's eight quid and I think they normally sell about five or six quid. I said to her, listen, if it was a hundred quid, I'd pay for it. <laughs> Maybe not a hundred. But anyway, so because I've now got a whole extra bag of compost that's down at the garden, that's brilliant. So tomorrow I can start things like my brassicas, some of my beans. There's tons of stuff to start. Um, but now, here, back home, I'm going to start some cucumbers, some squash. I don't think there's going to be time today, but I need to start pricking out my little celery plants. So, without further ado, let's get stuck into some seed sowing. You can probably see, <laughs> I've already started to get myself ready with trays, with my little pots that are filled with compost. I can just go whack them all in. And the principles for sowing cucumbers and squash is exactly the same as you might expect, very similar family. Uh, so I've got all that ready. Don't forget, so I shouldn't have rattled your labels. I've got all these lovely, um, these are coffee stirrers. So if you remember my, one of my neighbours, Catherine, at her office last year, she put a receptacle in the kitchen to say, please put your coffee stirrers here got them washed, they make, I mean they're only quite tiddly and fine, but they make great little labels and I've got so many different varieties, I'm going to talk about that now, I've got so many different varieties, I want to make sure I label them properly. 
Now the thing about both the cukes and the squash, previously, in previous years, going back, it was maybe four or five years ago, I used to start these in the cold frame. <clears throat> no issues, brilliant. However, about four or five years ago, the mice discovered my cold frame and they had the lot out. So I start them at home now. Once they're underway, they're fine. They'll go down to the garden, they'll go in the cold frame to do some hardening off. I might sow a couple of backups in the cold frame and try the tool uh, thing that I did with the broad beans. We'll see. But anyway, let's get on with this lot now. So with the squash, ah, I can show you because I've got a few left from last year's harvest. That's a Waltham butternut. Absolutely lovely bog standard butternut. Here, oh, isn't that pretty? This is a carnival. This was really still quite green when I picked it, but you can see over time. So this was harvested last October. October, November, December, January, February, March. It's nearly seven months old. Stores really well. And you can see it's got a beautiful orange as it's ripe and continue to ripen at home. <clears throat> and then this one, another lovely one, look at the shape of that. Isn't that a beauty? This one is called Cream of the Crop. So when I'm picking which squash to grow, I'm, I'm having two thoughts. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm picking two types. So I'll grow some horizontally, they'll just sprawl across the ground. That will include the Walthams, and this year I'm going to do my uh, Rouge Vif des Tombes again. I haven't grown it for a couple of years. That's the Cinderella pumpkin. It's so beautiful and perfect. And I thought, you know what? I am going to pop one in this year because they're they're such a delight to spot in the garden and I thought of all the years let's have something really really fun to look out for. So with that horizontally grown crops I'm going to do the Wolf and Butternut, the Rouge Vif de Tombe and the Mosquée de Provence. Um, the reason I'm going to do them horizontally is because they can get quite big. So obviously it's easier for them to sit on the ground than to be hanging in my climbing squash section. I could, in the hanging section, I could of course make some sort of support for it to hang it, but who's got time for that? <laughs> I certainly haven't. And it's always that thing of, what if I can't get to the garden over a few days, I miss that opportunity to support it and it snaps off. So I'm gonna do those horizontally. For the vertical, as in the climb, hang on a minute. Yeah, for the climbing squash, I'm going to erect six TPs again this year. And for each TP, I want three plants going up it. So, when you're picking your squash varieties, there's a couple of things you want to think about in terms of where you're going to plant them. If the fruit's going to be massive, like the Rouge Vif de Tombe, I just like saying that, do it horizontally so the ground can support it. Also, a few varieties of squash are what are known as clump forming. So, for example, the Carnival. So what happens is you end up with this plant that's Oh, it can be a metre and a half, even two metres wide. They take up a lot of space. And it's sort of this domey clump of a plant. It does what it says on the tin. The ones I want for climbing are types that they'll have a, a vining type. So they'll put out a main leading stem. That's what I'll train up, up, up the teepee. And from that single stem, hopefully dozens of fruits will appear. So if you're going to go vertical, make sure you pick uh, a variety that has smaller fruits and that's a vining type rather than a clumping type. So for my, I've explained, I've told you now, I'm in my horizontal bed, Wolf and Butternuts, Musquet de Provence and the Rouge Vif de Tombe. For the climbing, 
I'm going to go with a delicata again. I think I have one delicata left. Let me have a little look. I store them in the eaves under my window. Yes, I've got one delicata. Have I gone red being upside down? So you can see it's a nice small fruit. These are lovely for one or two. Um, I just kind of slice it in half, scoop out the seeds, either roast it just like that with nothing in it and have it as a side for something else or stuff it with a little bit of like goat's cheese. Oh, squash and goat's cheese, match made in heaven. So I'm doing delicata. A new one to me, uh, a, a, a yellow scallop. I think they're quite a small one, so it's, it looks a little like the carnival, but it's small. I've been sent, oh, I haven't written names on packets, I'm so sorry. I'm going to do some tromboncino. That's the long, phallic <laughs> looking ones. Um, it's partly is a bit of a giggle, but also because they've got that really, really long neck and then they've got this sort of, imagine like a butter knot. Imagine this is a really, really long neck. This is where the seeds are. That whole neck is flesh as opposed to here where we've got that big seed cavity. So although that looks like a load of flesh, it's half empty. So I'm thinking with the tromboncinos, that's great. There's a lot of flesh per fruit. I'm also going to be doing uh, Jack Be Little. Again, it was one that was sent to me, so I wouldn't normally do it, but I thought, yes, I'll have a go. My old favourite, Sucrine du Berry, which is the slightly nutmeggy one. It's supposed to be slightly nutmeggy. To be honest, I'm not sure that I can discern that, but it is a beautiful, beautiful squash, and it, and it normally does pretty well for me in my garden and then finally i'm going to do some more cream of the crop okay so to be honest i'm not going to show you me <laughs> sewing tray after tray after tray after tray uh, i'm just going to demonstrate with one my cucumber the variety is long green marecha or something like ver Long Marcher, it's a French variety. Half my garden is French. These are seeds I saved from my own harvest last year. Little tiddlers. Now, what I don't, what I've not experienced is my cucumbers have never crossed with my squash. I've kind of always half expected that because the families are so close. But this is now my, this must be about my sixth sowing up with saved seeds. So in other words, six years ago, I bought a packet of seeds that had maybe 10 seeds in, grew them, really enjoyed them, saved one cucumber specifically for seed saving. And ever since then, I've not bought seeds, which is great because again, with this, sort of, you know, organic seeds tend to cost a bit more but especially the sort of uh, the heritage varieties, the slightly more unusual ones. So I think my original packet was about three pounds, but now over, let's say that's spread over six years, that's costing me 50p a year. And obviously there's no reason why I won't save these for years and years and years until eventually it's three p a year. Like I say, they've never crossed. So here is our little seed teeny tiny in exactly the same way when I was talking about the loofah rather than sewing it flat sitting on the soil I'm going to sew it sideways on I wonder if it'd be easier to show you with a big pumpkin seed let me show you the big pumpkin seed Where are these going? Oh yeah, <laughs> I need to get these labels sorted. Okay, so there's my lovely big seed. So instead of planting it flat like that, I'm gonna plant it on its side like that. The thought is that if we plant it flat, it, it sort of, it can sit with water on it and it could rot. I've never found that myself. I've never planted them this way. I've always planted them on their side because that's what I was taught. And 
really we shouldn't be watering them so much that they're going to rot you know that's I think whether they're on their whichever way up that's too much water I think so um, I'm a bit short of pots so that's slightly on the small side but that's the best I've got so when I pop it in on its side I'm going to just pop it in about about twice its own depth so much as I was saying the other day with the onions there's the seed there's the depth I've planted it to so seed and the same depth of seed above it let me get a label straight away because I will forget otherwise and just write on it a rouge and I will know when I first started growing a million years ago you know kind of before the first world war <laughs> it was the end of the Crimean war when I first started growing um, I was taught that the squash family really don't like to have their roots disturbed which is why I bring them on in these little individual pots. I won't pot them on, that's why I'm kind of mentioning about the size of the pot, it is a bit small. I don't ever pot my squash on into a bigger pot, they'll go from this into the ground. They'll have a couple of stages in between, they're going to go in the living room, in the front room, in the light, I'm going to show you that in a minute, it's a crazy sight. Nice and warm get them going. Once I've got a couple of true leaves they'll then go outside onto my landing that's outside of my flat. It's still got really good light but it's much cooler. That's them being introduced to the outside. After about a week there they'll go to the garden, they'll go in the cold frame for a final bit of hardening. To be honest at the moment it's warmer outside than it is in my hallway so they may not even go in the cold frame, they may just sit out but I'll keep a really really close eye on the nighttime temperatures because all of these squash peppers tomatoes they really really don't like it if the nighttime temperature drops below six I kind of give myself a cut off of eight I'm talking degrees centigrade um, so yeah if, if it looks like we're gonna have a chilly night get them in the cold frame if there's room <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, shut up all the windows, tuck them up for the night, next day, go down, either open all the windows up and leave them or open it up and get them all out again. So that hopefully, around the last week of May, first week of June, they'll get planted. After I've built all the teepees, oh my goodness. Okay, so, like I said, it's gonna take me an age because there's a lot to get through. I'll get them done and then I'm going to quickly show you how all the other seedlings are doing, everything that's been potted on, <laughs> show you the chaos that is my flat at this time of year. See you in a second. It would look pretty good. seeds please do well for me again because I do enjoy my cucumber the cucumber wumba in the morning good stuff plenty of seed for next year if I don't manage to save any this year right then let me show you the nursery <laughs> down here oh 
look, can you see these are my celery that all are starting to get two leaves so they all need pricking out which I shall do in a minute but then we have <laughs> wait for it, it's very very bright day today on the floor and then on my window seat <laughs> and then on my windowsill oh my goodness so I've got a bit of a gap here this is so I can get in firstly to water and also to do my rotation because I strictly rotate, rotate everything in a clockwise direction so basically whatever's on the windowsill and I do this every day whatever's on the windowsill will now come down to the floor what is a, whatever's on the window seat will go up into the windowsill whatever's on the floor here will go onto the window seat and so on in a circle just to try to make sure everything gets a fair chunk of the light so I mean you can imagine look when all this starts to germinate it's going to be madness a wonderful madness but of course by then hopefully for example that is a tray of peppers and loofah some of these will start to move out to the hallway soon oh these loofah they're beautiful yay they look a bit they look a bit droopy and i thought the other day oh they're drooping but actually the leaves are stiff there's good kind of they're not floppy there's life in them but yeah they're growing away right, right nicely those two were the I'm trying to see, ah, oh, those two were soaked, my soaked seeds. There's a couple, no, there's three in here. Here, here, and here. They were sown dry. And somewhere else, I've got two more that were sown after having, oh, here they are, after having scarified them. There we go. So you can see the soaked ones are definitely further ahead. The non-soaked, non-scarified all germinated. One scarified didn't germinate and one soaked didn't germinate. So to be honest, I don't think there's a huge amount of difference, except I think perhaps soaking did help. Masses and masses of tomatoes. Oop, more peppers. They had to wait until I got some more compost, so they're a little bit behind this lot of peppers. This is the lot that I was pricking out the other day. This is all my, should be orange bell. Yeah, that's all orange bell. More tomatoes at the back, more for her ozen. Ah, which means that down here, these peppers, this is my doulong de londe long skinny gorgeous French ones and uh, yes more tomatoes 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 everywhere look I think actually let's go and I, don't, I want to go and sit down again because I'm a bit afraid of going flying and um, oh and tipping can you imagine if I tipped this lot over now oh my goodness that would be a little bit uh, well completely gutting isn't it lovely to see oh so much green loving it loving it loving it I'm especially loving oh coming around this way again especially loving the loofah <sighs> it's a <laughs> oh it's kind of madness every day moving everything getting everything watered but isn't it worth it when you get gorgeous fresh goodies to eat and of course all the lovely um, stored produce that I'm still eating now. Yay! Probably I won't harvest my first squash until, oh, end of September. So if you think about it, we've got May, June, July, August. I've got five months to go before the next harvest. So and I think I've got, I think I've got 11 squash left. So that's two a month. Brilliant. Okay, so there's a couple of things I think I forgot to mention. One, I always start with fresh squash seeds. Oh, that's quite hard. Fresh squash seeds. You try it at home. Fresh squash seeds. I start with fresh squash seeds each year because they are notorious for cross-pollinating. Um, now, 
because of that I don't save my own seed. It's one of the few things that would be incredibly easy to save seed from, but that I don't. Um, look, you can try it, but you may get something weird and wacky that's yucky tasting, in in inedible. You may have a lucky accident. I don't want to risk having a lucky accident and generally having, I mean, I, I generally try to get about 40 to 50 squash to come to fruition a year. And that's one squash a week, all year, keeps me going. If I, if I was to try saving my own seeds and they were all a disaster, that's a huge, huge gap in my food for the year. So yes, I start with fresh seed. Uh, I generally sow one to two more seeds than I need. It's almost inevitable that I won't get 100% germination. Let's say I want three plants per TP and I've sowed five seeds, the chances are I might get three that come good. But even then, I could plant three out and have one knocked off by the slugs. So yeah, I over sow every year. And then if one of them, I get five germinating and one only gets two germinating, well, I'll use one of those spares to add to a different TP. And always the bottom line is, if I get them all to grow, wouldn't that be amazing, I give them away or I do swapsies. You know, in the past on my site, we're, we're, we do have seedling swaps. We have a seed swap in the winter or the AGM. And then as we move into sort of mid-May or so, we'll set up a table and we'll do a seedling swap. And I think this year that's going to be more important than ever because, like I say, there's a few plotters who can't come to their plots. So we're just going to pitch in and just try and plant stuff for them so that eventually when they can come back, in the late summer whenever they've got a garden full of goodies. Oh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. I just really hope that everything I'm trying to grow, I can keep it all alive and keep it all going because it would just be so lovely to treat some of our older plotters uh, to a garden full of veggie. I'm gonna get emotional. I, I can just imagine, I, I can just imagine how much it will mean to them. Yay, so everybody plant one extra, just one extra or two or three or four. Okay, that's it, over and out from me. I need to start pricking out those celery. They are so, so fiddly to do. It's one of the jobs I really don't enjoy because it takes ages, it's dead fiddly. Half the time I think I'm gonna kill the lot. Obviously I don't because I do end up with a harvest or you know plants to go out, but yeah. Not doing it on camera because the whole time I will be swearing like a navvy <laughs> and none of you need to hear that. So, cheerio, it's cheerio time. Uh, it's been really lovely hanging out with you guys today. Thank you for hanging with me in the kitchen while I was getting on with things. Stay well, stay out of mischief, keep sowing those seeds. We're sowing so much hope this year as well as our veggies, yay. I will see you all again really soon in the garden to do more sowing. Which reminds me, after I've pricked out this celery, I need to go back to the garden and knock seven bells out of what is supposed to be the carrot bed. So, until then, please, please stay well. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.